Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be looking at one of the most underappreciated look building tools in DaVinci Resolve. And uh, DaVinci Resolve 19 Beta, which is out now, has added a little extra functionality to it. We're gonna talk about the RGB Mixer. So the way we're gonna do this is first, I'm gonna show you kind of how to use the tool and some of my mentality behind using it. And then afterwards, I'm gonna show you some of the fun upgrades that are coming in DaVinci Resolve 19. Now as a heads up, I did record the first part of this video uh, about a week and a half ago before I started growing some of this facial hair here. So uh, don't get a jump scare when I uh, do this transition. One of the common problems we run into when we're color grading is how do we pull a, uh, a cohesive looking image out of what we're given? Uh, and this is especially true when we're working on projects that we don't have our department dressing every single set element or person in the frame. So the example I'm gonna use is of a, uh, a promotional piece for uh, a town that did a, like a Mardi Gras celebration. It was kind of like a recap celebration and promotion for the next year. In a situation like this where it's closer to a document than a feature film, we can't tell everyone running in this race to show up with these specific colors. One of the tools I found helpful in this situation is the RGB mixer in DaVinci Resolve. Let's jump in and take a look at, first of all, how the tool works, but then secondly, how can it help us generate a look and generate a more cohesive image? So what I have here is a couple of clips from this uh, promotional film, and basically what I've done is I've set up some basic color management and some you know contrast curves, uh, but since the focus of that is not in this video, I I kind of group them into a compound note so we can focus on the uh, the matrix here. But if you want to know more about color management, you can check out some of the other videos I've done. But for, for now, we're focusing on this uh, RGB mixer. What you'll see is it's kind of grouped in these three categories. We have the uh, the red output, green output, and blue output. And what you'll notice is that the, uh, the red channel, or whichever the primary channel is, is being represented as a one. So the blue is one, uh, you know, zero, zero for uh, red and green in the blue channel. The green is one, and then the red is one here. The way this works is we can increase the green in the image through, uh, through three different methods. And we, you can use the green channel to add green, the blue channel to add green, and the, uh, the red channel to add green. Now, that might seem confusing at first, but uh, maybe this will clear it up. Uh, if we look at this image, we realize that the, uh, the red channel is only gonna contain the red information. So uh, we're gonna have more red information maybe in this uh, kind of like yellowish block of this arch than the blue. And in uh, DaVinci Resolve, we can actually take a look at what the red channel looks like. So we can say, you know, uh, what does the red channel look like? Well, you'll notice that there's uh, the, the white is kind of representing more information and the black is less. We have more red, more red channel information in these yellow pieces uh, than in the blue up top. And you'll see that if we go over to the, uh, the, the, the blue channel, the opposite will be true. We have more information in this, uh, this section of the arch because that was blue and less in this one because it was red. So let's go back to the, uh, the screen there. What we can do is we can take that information and apply adding red, green, or blue in different ways. So let's say here, I want to add green to the image but I primarily want to add green in the areas that are blue. What I can do is I can add green primarily using the blue channel information. So just as an example here, let's really do kind of an extreme example. I'm gonna make this uh, 0.5 here. And as you see, I make it 0.5, uh, the image gets super out of whack. So in order for the image to maintain its neutral points, we have to make sure that these three numbers end up equaling one. So what I might do is I might say you know, 0.75 here, and I might take red and go uh, negative 0.25. If I disable this adjustment, you'll see that uh, in the blues, as I enable it, we add a lot more green to those parts of the image. So let me uh, disable and then enable. Now, I, I don't love this as is, but you're, what you're seeing is, is we're adding green to the image but primarily in the blue areas. So we can actually use this tool to generate a slightly more cohesive hole for this image because some of the problems that I'm seeing in this image is things like, I see this guy's wearing kind of a bluish gray shirt, but that bluish gray doesn't really line up with the, uh, the blue in the arch here. And you know, there's a couple different uh, hues of blue in the background. We also have a, a bunch of different types of reds and yellows here. Like I see this guy's shirt. I, in my opinion, that shirt really clashes with uh, this, this kind of um, orangish yellow yellow section of the arch and uh, these various popping colors throughout the uh, the group here they don't they don't pull together nicely it doesn't feel like we have a cohesive image and the the three by three matrix here this this rgb mixer can help us with this one of the things i did for this piece though is i said well it seems to me that we want some of the warm parts to get warmer and the cool parts to get cooler so uh, one method of doing that could be well we're going to imp we're going to increase the warmth primarily in the red areas in the image so instead of just one here i might say you know 1.1 we're going to add that 
But in order to keep the neutrals in place, we need to uh, balance out the, the green and red channels. So I'll say negative 0 0.05. And then in the blue channel, I'll say negative 0 0.05 as well. So there we go. It's, it's really subtle, but if I disable it and enable it, you'll notice we have a slight bit more. I especially noticed this in the, uh, the skin tones here. Let me get a little lower. So if I disable it, you'll notice we're not getting as much in the skin tones. And if I enable it, we're getting a little more of that pop in there, which I think is a nice addition. So that, that slightly increased the, uh, the, the presence of the red and the warm channels. Let's do the same, but a little more extreme with the blue. So we want the blues to get bluer. So I'm going to say 1.2 here. And uh, one of the other things I know, uh, just because I experimented a lot in this piece, is I also wanted the greens to get a little bluer. So I'm going to just add uh, 0.1 to the greens as well. But in order to get this back to uh, 1, we're going to have to subtract 0.3 from it. There we go. The next thing I wanted to do in this piece was uh, slightly bias some of the cool tones a little bit greener, maybe a little more cyan than uh, kind of the, uh, where I think we're sometimes getting a little bit of a uh, almost like magenta hue in some of the blues. So, so let's do that. Let's say that we want a little more green in the, uh, the blue areas of the image. So I'm going to crank this up to something like let's say 0.3, and then I, that means I need to subtract, uh, you know, eventually 0.3 from these other two. So I will say, you know, 0.85 and then negative 0.15. There we go. Uh, and so as, as I look at this image, uh, let me scroll in a little bit. You'll notice that a lot of these blue tones are now kind of nicely coming together. As I look at the, uh, the blue of this arch and the blue of his shirt and some of the people in the background, we're starting to have an image that is more congruent. And although this shirt uh, isn't perfect with this arch, I certainly think it's a lot better than before. I think that those two are really ugly there, and we're starting to pull them a little closer. They both share a little more of those, those warm tones. And this is evidenced in the vector scope, so let me pull these adjustments off. You'll notice how the image has a, a bunch of different hues in it, but when I enable it, you'll see that we're starting to stretch this image along this warm, cool axis. Now at this point, uh, personally, I feel like this image is slightly oversaturated for, for my taste at this point. And one of the things we can do is we can uh, disable this node and just take, and take a quick snapshot. So I'm gonna grab that still. Then I'm gonna enable it. And what you'll notice is that before and after where we're adding saturation to the warmth and the, uh, the cool tones, what we can do is we can put a node uh, before that matrix. I'm just gonna call this DSAT. And we can drop the saturation out so that the uh, saturation levels are similar to before. So here are kind of the before saturation levels. There's the after. Let's start to uh, pull the saturation down. I'm going to do a little comparison. That seems pretty good right there. I'm going to just add a, a little bit more in. So now uh, we're, we're more like refining the image rather than just adding saturation. So here's kind of, a, let me take both of these off. So here's the before, so a, very, a very disjointed feeling image. Lots of uh, magenta tones, the, the warm tones aren't lining up either. And here's the after. Uh, we, we see that there's a little more of a consistent cyan theme throughout it. Although there is still, you know, purple over here and this guy's shirt doesn't match perfectly. It, it's a nice broad stroke adjustment that's moving us in the right direction. And one of the great things about the, uh, the RGB mixer here is you're not going to break the image super easily as long as all these uh, groups are ending up totaling up back to one. So let me just take off this desaturation just to show you. I can jump around to other images in this piece and you'll see it does a really nice job of emphasizing these similar tones. So, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of emphasizing some of the more orange and some of the more cyan blues here. Uh, and even like at night, right, we kind of have some of the, the cyan tones and the, the, the orange and warm tones. The production team didn't ask everyone to, to fit with some certain aesthetic, but using this matrix is allowing us to pull some of these colors in a, at least a similar direction. So what's new with the RGB mixer in DaVinci Resolve 19? Well, I'm going to use my laptop here since uh, it's still in beta and I never want to use the beta on my main workstation. But in Resolve 19, you'll see that there's this new icon in the top left-hand corner of the red, green, and blue outputs. So right now, it's off, and it operates just like it did previously. So if I make this 1.2, the whole image gets super red. And if I'd want to neutralize it, I'd have to take the green and blue down. So I'd have to keep all the numbers adding up to one, right? So I'd have to say like negative 0.1 here and then negative 0.1 there. Well, to save you a little bit of time, if we enable this auto up top, what this is really doing is it's normalizing it for you. So if I come here with the red and I all of a sudden bring this up to 1.2, you'll notice down here, uh, it's already taking these numbers and neutralizing the image for you. So same thing if the, on the blue channel. If I go and grab the blue and push the blue up really high, well, auto's off at the moment, so it just biases the image blue. I click it, 
and there we go. It's automatically bringing down the red and green channel. It'll also attempt to intelligently understand your uh, inputs. So if I'm over here and I adjust the green, you'll see this trying to adjust the blue channel here. Now that's not always the right instinct. So sometimes you will want to turn off the auto feature and just adjust these manually. But I really like that this is being included because I think it will be a more intuitive way for people to start embracing and using the tool. So there you go, there's a quick look at how to use the RGB mixer in your projects. I would just encourage you, experiment a lot with this. That's the easiest way to start to wrap your head around how this tool works. I find that I am often using the RGB mixer uh, a lot of times when I'm doing documentary work or work where there isn't necessarily an art department that has been able to coordinate every single thing in the frame. It can really help us, if you're going after that more you know, warm and cool look, it can help us stretch the image along that axis in a really pleasant way. Uh, also, make sure when you're messing around with this to keep an eye on your vector scope. It will help you understand what it's doing to your image. Now, the RGB mixer can be used for more than just look creation. It has a, a bunch of different purposes. Uh, and let me know uh, down in the comments if that's something you would want me to uh, address in future videos. I just think that this tool is something that is not talked about nearly enough and it can create some cool results in different ways than uh, than other tools in Resolve deal with it. So have, have you used the uh, RGB mixer before? Let me know uh, some of the practical ways that you found it helpful. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button and uh, subscribe to stick around for uh, more content like this in the future. All right, I'll see you in the next one.